Hey, what's going on guys? For this portion of the video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a cobalt battery. This is a 24 volt, 2 amp battery right here. There is the part number. I will try my best to link it in the description box below the video. We have a power source, cobalt power source right on top. Has two USBs, so you literally could charge a device while you're using your scooter, electric bike, etc has a belt clip here, as we can see. It's supposed to clip on a construction worker's belt, power his phone, power something else, but of course we're not using it for that. This again, 24 volt, two amp per battery with one power source on top of here. Here is my power source that I just drilled into here. What I did is I actually took apart the power source. There's two Phillips screws, one here, one here, that will remove the clip and then you have these two holes here and here. Those expose, those little screws in there is a very inconvenient when I say that because it is a security tamper proof Torx and you're gonna need a long one right there. The precise sizing on that one is TT10 and again, it is a tamper proof security Torx. There's a little indention right in the middle of it which makes it different than regular Torx. So this is our end result, and I'll walk you through it here. We have 10 gauge wire coming out of it. We have, of course, red and black, positive and negative. That is a XT60 connector right there. I will link all this again in the description box below so you know what I'm talking about. There is the power source little box there. So for this process, you want to go ahead and remove the screws. Now I put them back in. So for this portion right here, why it's kind of an empty shell like this is I actually, again, I gutted it. I took out the motherboard inside, which is right here. I took this out before I obviously drilled it because you're going to be drilling in right into this section here. And if you hit one of these little itty bitty fuses or whatnot, you could ruin your USB ports or something else. So anyway, what I did is I took that motherboard out. I screwed the TT nuts back in so it's connected. And then I drilled in right there in the indention there. So my wires come out just like that. And the belt clip is not being blocked, so I could still use that as well. So let's take a look at the motherboard right here of the Cobalt power supply source here. We see a solder point right where my thumb is pointing to there. That exposes this little prong here. We're going to go ahead and solder on our black negative connector to that one there. And we're going to go ahead and solder on our red positive connector to the soldering point right where my thumb is pointing to behind the capacitor right there. And that obviously goes to this one. So positive negative the middle one we're not going to touch at all here is what my connector looks like here again 10 gauge wire that is about i'd say a solid 10 inches per wire right there maybe 11 soldered into my xt60 connector with shrink wrap and again i probably should have used different color wire but in a pinch you just got to do what you got to do so i just marked it positive and negative with the shrink wrap there. And the XT60 connector is kind of hard to see, but it has a little positive symbol. It has a positive symbol on top, and it has a negative symbol right there, which is kind of hard to see on camera. So let's go ahead and strip the ends of these wires here, exposing maybe a centimeter or so. And then we're going to go ahead and bend the copper wire on. We're going to bend it into position. And you're going to want to lay these pretty much flat because you want it to be able to slide back into the case. And then obviously make sure you have some good solder connection points. You might want to use a little bit of raised up metal soldered in and then solder the wire to the metal. If you're a good solder, I'm a pretty poor solderer, but I get the job done. Wrap it with some shrink wrap or insulation, electrical tape. And then of course the wires will be coming out of the power source right here. When you hook up a multimeter to it, it registers 24, 24.5. You could even get up to 25. It depends what kind of voltage is coming out of your battery. All right, so these are the batteries inside my scooter here. As you can see here, both the power sources are on top of the batteries and it has a little battery reader there, which mine are about halfway. You got both lines coming out of each power source 
into, let's go ahead and bring them out so we can get a better look at it. Okay, so what we have here is we have again, 224 volt, two amp each, but now I've created an inline. So now if you stuck a multimeter on the end of this, we would register 48 because we're going in line, meaning both of these equal one now because of this next connector that I've put in here. So both lines feed into this connector which feeds into my 1000 watt controller right here. And these are XT60 connectors, so if you're wondering, all this is, I redid my male connector to my female connectors on my controller. You don't have to do this, but they are nice connectors. Now how we made it in line, we have a very small 10 gauge wire under here that's just looped around in a little horseshoe shape right there. I've stripped the wire and I soldered it in with shrink wrap and electrical. I have then looped in one side, and I'm sorry, the electrical tape is covering that up, into a male connector, and right underneath this portion of the male connector is your positive. So I've gone in one positive, then looped it around to another male connector, and that one is negative here. So we're going positive, looped around to a negative, both those are male connectors and our female connectors from our battery packs are going into this loop around here. We have my rear battery, the two lines are going in here. Of course, red is positive, black is negative, vice versa. Our front battery is going into that connector there, which leads into that one. So again, the bottom of the horseshoe is right here. Now on top here, we have very short 10 gauge wire going into a female connector right here, XT60 female connector. Okay, so on the top here, we have our negative side. On this side is our positive side. So the square portion is the positive. This portion on the top is negative. We have one line running from my negative to my negative, and then we have one line running from positive to the positive portion of this one here. This, again, this one here, after it goes through this series of the line loop around, now we're cranking out 48, 48.5 estimation. Sometimes you get almost 49 out of that. That one connects to my 1000 watt controller male plug, and that's how you get 48 inline volts out of two battery pack that are supposed to be for drills or battery operated tools. That video is gonna do it for inline batteries, but stay tuned for my full explanation of a thousand watt controller. I also put in a variable throttle. I do have a saddle bag and a cell phone holder. Stay tuned for this full video. I'm taking it in short little pieces, but those videos will be up very, very quickly. And again, this is the E200. This is the same method can be applied to the E300, which I will eventually be upgrading to myself. And just in case you're wondering, this is how I charge it. It detaches from the battery pack, just like this, and you fire it on your charger. You're up and running, good to go. Hopefully the video has helped you. Again, link in this in the description box for the battery packs, the power supplies, what I use, the XT60 connectors, even the charger. It's a very fast charger as well. So stay tuned for those videos. And that's how you can get up and running 30 miles per hour on your Razer E200, E300. But just note that you're not going to go very far with that kind of speed. It's going to be short-lived because it's going to be so powerful. The bigger the batteries, the more amps, obviously the more distance you can get. Hopefully the video has helped you guys. We'll see you on the next one.